Ladies and gentlemen, back at Structure Studios 101, Pole Studio Blue. We're going to be talking about some terrain manipulation today around some steps and steppers and walk paths and walkways and stuff. And we're going to show you a few different ways to do things. This is, we're going to be working with a 36 inch elevation change only, nothing greater. It's just zero to 36 inches. And then uh, we're going to be doing a few different methods, and I'll show you some tips and tricks and some different uh, procedures that I use. So for straight lay stuff, I'm going to copy and paste some of these steppers that I already have. L to turn on relative angle, W shortcut key to rotate it in place, and then I'm going to copy and paste one more stepper and place it back here just outside of the, uh, of the deck. So... I did use a 0.5 inch grid to make this, so we're kind of going to stick with that a little bit, and then I'll show you how I do a lot of toggling and grid and line snap manipulation. So pick a stepper. I like this one. Let's drop these down in six inch increments and a height change. Um, whatever you drop it down, seven and a quarter, seven and three quarter, whatever it is, I'm going to do six here for demonstration purposes. And again, the straight lay on this 36 inch drop, you're not gonna have to do a lot, any terrain manipulation. It looks like it's nice and smooth. We can turn on some 3D grass. We can look at this. Everything looks good here. So this is a straight lay stepper drop on a 36 inch um, that we're not gonna have to do anything to. Um, so let's get a vanishing edge in on this pool here. And so we can do a, uh, I can show you how to do the uh, terrain manipulation on the turf bands up top um, so what we're going to do is we're going to get down in here on our pool we're going to be working on this corner here um, so let's go into spas and water features stage and we're going to be working off of this corner um, to this corner over here for our vanishing edge basin now this outer line here is a guideline that i use to snap my five inch turf strip um, so i'm just going to delete that out of the way so we don't confuse anyone and then we're going to get started here on this vanishing edge basin. So what I like to do is I like to get inside the water line. D shortcut key for outline tool. Right on that edge of the water line, all the way across to the other edge. You don't want to go past. You don't want to go past. You don't want to go around. You want to stay right there nice and straight. A good visual indicator is turn on your fractions of an inch. If you see a fraction, that means you're not straight. So be uh, conscious of that. So D shortcut key for outline tool. I'm going to outline my basin here and click at two feet. Let's do a 24 inch basin for demonstration purposes. There we go. So back in 3D, we're going to drop this down. Let's go down 12 inches uh, underneath the beam. Just like this. There we go. Now we have our, our uh, vanishing edge basin. So we're going to go back into pool stage and add an overflow or a spillover um to this so okay so this is a 0.5 so per, for precision work uh the grid is very important so you can count grid spaces like if i wanted to one inch here then it's every two squares so you can i use this a lot i count a lot of squares or i can just uh, pop myself a guideline which is what i'm going to do here six inches and then just click and drag this all the way across for quick work and then snap it in place. So your snaps, your grid is only on the perpendicular, that's it at this point, and your relative angle. So under object settings, you got your spillover, turn your volume down to zero. No one wants to hear Niagara Falls, um, especially during presentation, you turn it on, water noise blows your ears out. It's kind of embarrassing. Make it a habit, turn your water noise down to one or zero and be done with it. So we got our vanishing edge basin here with a six inch turn in for our spillover. And so let's add some decking down below for our lower terrace and then we'll start dropping some stairs in. I'll show you a few different things that I do um, to get these, uh, to get my, uh, my lower terraces in. So let's go 36 inches, four feet, something like that past the uh, vanishing edge bottom for walk. And then we're going to go out to the outside of my steppers, and we're going to come down back to the uh, hard skates and decks. We're not going to stop it at the steppers. So it's going to want to auto-complete. We don't want to do that. We're going to come over. I'm going to go all the way to the basin. D shortcut key for outline tool. Click all the way around. And click. And click. Yep. And then A for our line, A shortcut key. And there we go. So let's drop this down to two. 
And now we have our lower terrace and I did a fire pit with some fire glass. So that was my last material, so it retained. So we're gonna change this material to a white just for demonstration purposes. There we go. All right, so now that we have our lower terrace in place and our hardscapes index is there, now we can go into our terrain mode and then bring this up to zero on the terrain since it follows the 36 inch drop. So in terrain mode, I'm gonna to go to elevation I'm going to turn my strength up. I'm going to do this relatively quick. I'm going to stay inside the hardscape and just go all the way back. And you're not going to disturb anything outside the hardscape. See there? Just make sure that you don't go outside of your hardscape. And now we have our turf band that's up at the top. You can also make these turf bands. If you wanted to make an additional piece of hardscapes and decks, you can do that too. It's not a big deal. Um, so there is that. So hardscapes and decks let's just say we wanted to add some steps that come down on the sides like this right here and we want to come down three steps and I'm going to roll this back uh, 36 inches so I'm going to make sure that my grid is on make sure that my everything's in order that I want to work with straight lines so I'm gonna go C shortcut key for my measuring tool right here and then click and let's go back 36 inches let's go back three feet and there we go just type three now i'm going to grab my upper hardscapes and decks area and i'm just going to roll this back to my marker and there we go so now we're going to go over here to create a staircase and let's work on our steps here and create a staircase i'll show you a couple things here uh, while we're in here so I'm gonna stop this here. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you what's gonna happen here. So in 3D, it's gonna default at a three-inch uh, lip. So we want to make sure that all of our lip styles are the same, as to avoid any type of geometry errors and such. And then one, two, three. You see the grass bleed here because for some reason, create a staircase does not cut the terrain. So if I zoom out, zoom back in, you'll see grass bleed. Watch this. There we go. See that? Easy fix. All you got to do once you get your steps and everything is uh, the way that you want them, click convert, click the hardscapes, and there you go. Quick and easy. You don't have to be messing with a bunch of individual uh, steps and pieces. You just do it once, click to convert, and then you're done. So you see how this turf band goes over here? Let's do a couple of things, and this is kind of a, like a little detail that I like to do So from time to time. Let's move our steps over, and I'll show you how this will go away. You can cut that off. There we go. They're back into 3D here. See, now it's all nice there, and that disappears. But usually there's going to be a coping band. Your turf band's going to stop, you know. I see how that is. But it, if you want to do like a little detail, you can do a little detail like this right here. Again, this is what I do. If you have a different type of material or borders or co copings of some sort, um, whatever it may be, you want to run that turf down. Uh, the edge of the steps just kind of continue that line all the way down and around you could do that and this is how I do it so you just make some individual pieces so in this particular case let's just change this material to something else just whatever randomly pops up and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these three steps I'm gonna roll it back five inches so back in hardscapes and decks let's close this library and I'm going to stay on each individual step because it's going to retain. So I'm going to click this. I'm going to roll this back and then not go to the next one. A for line. D shortcut key to outline. Click. And then go to the next. And it's going to automatically keep me at my uh, riser height. So A for line. Click. D shortcut key. Click. And then the last step. I'm going to click this. Roll it back five inches. Click. A for line, click, D shortcut key, click, and there we go. So now watch this. Now you have all these individual uh, faces that you can uh, change the material on. So if I wanted to make this little cool little edge detail like this where it looks like the turf continues on down the steps, I can do that. You can actually use artificial turf. You have to glue it in place. Um, however you want to do it. If it has a coping, let's just say you added a coping um, on your hardscapes and decks for a band, you know, you can, whatever that material is, um, you could also make it five inches if you have a smaller uh, coping uh, stone that you wanted to use. Uh, you could do it that way. 
um, back in Hardscapes and Decks, you just click here, click the coping, and then adjust your coping size. Uh, so there's a couple of little uh, coping tricks um, for you while we're here, just to kind of show you a couple of things um, on this. But we're going to turn this coping off here. But yeah, that's that. Uh, but cool little details, you know, you can do just some little extra pieces, a couple extra minutes. Um, you know, design time makes uh, really a lot of difference on the uh, the detail side. So always keep that in mind. So let's turn off this coping here. Okay, so there's your create a staircase method, converting to hardscapes and decks, and we're done. All right, so let's go out to something a little more intricate that we're going to get into some more terrain manipulation. I call it terrain sculpting because that's essentially that's what you're going to be doing is just sculpting the terrain. Um, so let's create like a, like a meandering type of lazy pathway that's going to come off of one of these. And then we'll do one that's really extremely curvy. And I'll show you how to, a couple of different methods um, that you can use uh, depending on if something's super curvy and super organic or something that's a little straighter, just like you saw on the other side. Um, and the different type of manipulation and fine tuning and fine detailing sculpting that you're going to do to the terrain, um, depending on which one of these it is you do. You're going to use both every single time. It's just one more than the other, depending on how organic the shape is. So what I like to do is I like to make my shape in 2D, which I'll just come up here. Like I said, this is going to be kind of a lazy kind of run here, kind of a long, lazier uh, curve. And we're going to come out here. So again, uh, only point line is on, my grid is off, and my relative angle is off. So if all of that is off, you don't want to go back in to turn on your relative angle. You can hold shift, and it'll make a straight line for you wherever that may be. But it's going to override. It's not going to snap to any grid or anything like that. So let's do some fine tuning here. Um, so what I like to do is I'll move this over and try to get this kind of straight coming off of that. I like guess this is a sidewalk or a patio or something like that. And then what I like to do is I like to come in here and use my outline tool, D shortcut key, and just outline my shape. So let's just say this is 3, 2, or whatever it may be. Here's my shape that I'm going to be working in. So I have myself guidelines that I'm not going to stray outside. And I know that these are mirrored, um, horizontal mirror across from each other. So I know that both sides are symmetrical. And that's why I do this. Um, so guidelines, very, very important, especially on stuff like this. So always keep that in mind for this one right here. Okay, so this one right here, as you see my guidelines here, this is just to keep everything straight. This is all snapped to the grid. Um, so let's do, let's do like a really organic curve, like a, some hard curves. And because this one's going to be more terrain manipulation, um, and more terrain sculpting for something like this right here. And we'll just go through the whole thing. Um, see how curvy this is, like just super curvy. And we're gonna curve this up here and we're gonna go straight to finish it off for our last uh, couple of steps or whatever. And so there we have it. Oops, we're gonna delete this out of here. We don't need that. So there's our shape. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fix this line here. I want a straight line for this one off. So I want to come straight off the sidewalk or the stepper or whatever this may be, whatever you're doing. For this demonstration, we're going to be doing um, just something as, as straight as possible. So again, I'm going to come back in here and turn my grid on because I need this line to be straight. And if I know my sidewalk or my stepper is straight down here, I want it to be straight when I meet up. So I'm going to turn my grid on, turn point and line you can leave that on uh so we're gonna go click here right, my relative angle is off so l shortcut key to turn that back on i don't use world angle i use relative angle and as you see our eyeball is pretty close so we're gonna snap this to the grid point here pink and there we go so now you can hold control and select both of these objects so highlight one hold control select the other object and group it to make it one line now you can use your D shortcut key for your outline tool and offset this just like we did this one over here. D, there we go. And we're in business. So now there is our super curvy shape. This one's going to be a little bit more intricate, but again, I did all of this in about 45 minutes. So you can do each one of these. Also check this point out. So the hard point like this smooth tool is your friend. So grab it and just smooth it out to wherever you like and click. And there you go. 
I use a smooth tool a lot also driveways and things like that um, so these tools are really really great uh, for stuff like that so here we go so this is our area we're going to be uh, focusing on and working in so what I'm going to do is this one's going to be individual steppers because th those are the most difficult to manipulate the terrain so I'm going to turn my grid on I'm going to do a lot of grid toggling a lot of line snap toggling as you see with your grid on you can pop this perfect six inch um, uh, spacing uh, with the grids off you're gonna see a bunch of decimals so you don't want to see decimals if you see decimals you're gonna be off it's not, something's gonna be off not snap not straight turn on fractions of an inch in your configuration settings it's a great visual indicator to keep yourself in line and keep everything straight so here's our first stepper I'm gonna come off again six inches my grid is on and we're gonna be toggling that on and off as we move along here once, once we get up into this curve, um, you'll see how, how, it'll, how it'll work out. And then we'll do a little bit of line manipulation um, on the back end. So I'm just going to kind of get some random um, uh, links and widths here uh, for these steppers. And we're going to be doing a lot of manipulation because you want your steppers to follow this curve and not be hard straight lines like you see here. You see, so I'm going to turn my relative angle off with a K shortcut key, turn it off delete that straight line I don't want any of these hard angles I'm gonna move this up and get it just eyeball it in place here and there we go now there's our first curve uh, of our stepper so again my grid is still on so I got my nice six inch uh, pop line for my turf band or sod or whatever it may be so I'm gonna always go outside of your lines never stop it on the lines and because you don't want when you start using your outline tool it's going to grab the point so because your point and line is going to be on so always go outside of your line so it'll be easier for you to grab uh, once you start using your outline tool here in just a minute when we start making these steppers so i'm going to do this in real time here uh, so it's going to take a few minutes um, so just to show you uh, if you follow along how i toggle on the line snaps and how I toggle the grid on and off when I do my spacers because I want my spacers to be six and now this is a little like a glitchy bug thing with the outline tool so you see the blue you hit enter now your outline tool is done again D shortcut key I'm gonna click and click oh see see my grid is on so I didn't click my line it clicked off of it so I'm turn my grid off I want that point to be there you can turn on midpoint um, and it'll click on the, the the midpoint of that but this is the way I do it um, it's just quick and you know, it's the way I've always done it again uh, you'll see the autocomplete but be careful with your autocomplete sometimes it'll want to complete inside your turf gap so you have to keep your eye on that because the program is kind of wonky and uh, you know you're just gonna have to just keep your eye on everything now let's change some materials here let's get this back to white just so we can see it in this side uh, want to get our outlines also because you're gonna see that once we start manipulating terrain but I can't see because of this grass so let's turn on fast edit there we go control V fast edits gonna turn off of your all your graphics 3d grass shadows you know that sort of thing so if you run it on a minimum spec machine I would encourage you especially if you're gonna be doing terrain work anything like that work with your fast edit mode on that way you don't bog down as much so again, you see my decimals here. We got to turn the grid on because I want six inch spacing. That's what I want. So we go six inches. So click and click. Now we got my six inch spacing. Now let's go back up here. I want this angle here. So there's my line. My relative angle's on. That's a 45 degree. Um, so I can manipulate this. Just eyeball it. Again, this is organic shapes. You're going to be eyeballing. Um, so here again turn grid off I want point and line only to catch those lines click D click D nope there it goes auto complete enter and again grid on snap that six inch perfect line for my spacing let's get our other line this is like a hard curve this is the hardest curve here so we're going to I'm just going to split this and kind of eyeball it so I can get these two uh, steppers roughly the same width so that's kind of what I'm looking for at this point you see my grid so see my grid is wanting to catch out there so let's turn the grid off point line only 
click it's going to snap on that point click d and there's that and crazy thing i hope they fix that click d see it wants to grab the the turf band i don't want that so be careful with that you don't want to get all the way down and realize you got to go all the way back and fix everything so always keep your eyes open for stuff like that just typical program stuff okay oh, see these little points here so if you put a uh, planter below these and make it like a gravel you're going to get some geometry errors and some really weird voids or splinters or something like that so make sure that these if you see something like that uh, let's there we go and since you're pointing lines on you're going to follow that line so just smooth it out and so you're not going to have any issues down the road when, if you add a planter underneath this or something that uh, joins up to it like a planter or whatever so keep that in mind, those little those little weird points. Is that's where you get your geometry errors, the splinters, the voids, you know, those infinity voids and such. Um, so here we go. Let's do again, we're going to just we're just eyeballing this to make sure that we're flowing with the curve since this is such a crazy organic uh, snaky curve. So here we go. We're gonna go click line and guess what we did not do our six inch band see so click our band turn your grid back on I saw decimals I knew my grid wasn't snapped or checked so there's our six inch band there so we're good so now we are going to complete our I'm gonna move this up a little bit since I moved my band I'm going to adjust this a little bit. Again, turn off your relative angle with a K shortcut key to manually, freely adjust that stuff. D, outline tool again, D shortcut key. I'm going to go click, D, click, D. It will autocomplete. Click, D, and click again. There we go. So we are back in business. Perfect. So let's go into 3D and see what we got so far. So now you see we're starting to get into the elevation drop. Now it's going to start getting fun. We're going to start doing some terrain manipulation here in just a few. But again, I'm doing this in real time. You know, I've had a lot of people say, hey, slow it down a little bit. So this is as slow as it's going to get. Um, so if you uh, are still having issues keeping up, you need to come see us over at VIP 3D Core Essentials on Facebook. We got about 1,800 uh, people in the group, uh, uh, all Structure Studios users, and uh, we can slow things down considerably and get on down on more of a, like a one-on-one -on -one basis with you if you're a beginner um, or if you've been using the program for a couple of months and you're not you know, as fast as these videos may go. Uh, come see us over there. Make sure you answer your group questions. Come on in and see us. we got about 25% of the Structure Studios user base at this point in our group. And uh, we do a lot of uh, a lot of customer support, um, you know, a lot of tips and tricks. If you have any type of issues, uh, you can always post up. There's always somebody on, a group expert, an admin. Somebody's going to answer your question and for the simplest uh, solution possible to whatever issue that is that you may be having. Uh, a lot of tips and tricks on your uh, machine hardware, computer hardware, um, optimization everything to keep your machine running top-notch at all times from maintenance schedules to graphics drivers and all of that fun stuff so come on over and see us uh, VIP 3d core essentials on Facebook all right so enough with that plug let's get back into this here so we're going we're, we're almost at the end here on this uh, crazy curve again this took you know seven or eight minutes but if you got some you know custom type of weird curvy snaky walk path like this that you want to do this is just the way that you're going to have to do it it's going to take a little bit of time it's going to take a few minutes extra uh, there's no uh, one click program does it all for you buttons it's just going to be you know you're just going to have to get in there and, and do a little work uh, but the end result is is going to be what you want so Spend a few extra minutes, get the detail, stand out from the rest of the herd, you know, and win the job because you paid attention to the details and the other persons didn't. Um, so here we go again. D, click, D, shortcut key. D, shortcut key is for outline tools. We're going to click, click, D again, click. And there we go. Now let's get our last stepper. We're going to go click here, D, shortcut key. 
outline tool. And there's our last step. We're done. So yeah, this one did take a little bit longer, but it's going to be super cool. So now here we have our shape. Everything's in place. So we're going to pick our stepper that we want to start with. So I think I'm going to start with this stepper here. We're going to go down six inches. And you'll see how we start cutting into the terrain. That's what we're going to sculpt out here in just a second. So let's drop all of these down. Six inch increments all the way down. There we go. One more. Down six. This one's not so bad. Um, if it were a straight shot, you know, that'd be one thing. This is going to curve. So we, it, But this is going to be very fine-tuned detailing and sculpting. Um, so this is going to be really critical here. So what I like to do is get my elevation tool and come in here and drop down about an inch below um, each one of these steppers. So you're going to have to play with your heights of your elevation tool and hold control and just start sculpting, just start brushing. And I usually will brush about 24 inches on either side, like this here, and get on this and this side because I'm going to I'm going to sculpt this terrain and it's going to be nice and, and smooth all the way down. So I'm going to come past my steppers, whatever, however much I need to. So remember, I've dropped down in increments of six. So that means I'm dropping my elevation down in increments of uh, one inch below that. And as we get on down, uh, these other steppers are a little bit, uh, they're, they're okay. I'm okay with those steppers, but you see how it's kind of hard right now. Right now, we're just removing earth. That's all we're doing. We're not sculpting yet. We're not fine-tuning anything yet. We're just removing earth. And so let's drop this down here. Again, you want to hold control, do a little bit of brushing, release control to reset your brush point. Because if I get all the way down here and I've held control the entire time and I've done all this terrain, I screw something up and I control Z, that means that I've just erased everything that I've done. All right, so fast edit mode back on. See that control Z? I didn't want to do that that much, so I want to reset. So that's okay. I always come past a little ways because when you start using your smooth tool, it's going to bring all that back. So just keep that in mind. So we're going to do a little. Now we're going to get into the sculpting part. So you see our hard, hard points here? So let's drop this down a little bit here. There we go. And this is going to be our base. Now back up to the top, I'm going to work myself from the top down. Uh, once I remove all the earth that I want to remove, and then I'll start smoothing all of this stuff out. So as you can see here, it's kind of a, I'm going to turn my strength down now. Strengths and sizes of your brush is going to matter a lot. So just play with that. Yeah, it looks a little rough. Don't worry about that. You're going to smooth all that out in just a minute. So we're going to, this is my hardest break right here. So I'm going to remove the most earth at this point, And then I'll work my way back from here since everything else up top looks fairly good. So I'm going to make my brush size a little bit larger. Use my smooth tool at about, you know, 25, 30% strength. Make this a little bit bigger. You see how it's all smoothing all of that rough edge out. So this is the sculpting that I'm talking about. So just hold control and just start brushing. And remember to release control and reset your brush points just in case you have to control Z something. And this is just the sculpting that we're talking about. Now, you're going to be doing this a lot. This is going to, you know, you're, this is just terrain manipulation and sculpting. This takes the most time. So don't think that you're going to be doing this quick. Terrain manipulation and sculpting takes a lot of time. But the end result is going to be what you want it to be. Also, keep in mind that the center, the the very center of this radius, terrain radius that you see, is going to be the strongest, and it gets weaker as it moves toward the outer radius. So try not to get your um, the radius over your steps. You see how I'm doing this here because I want to move the earth. I want to move the earth in the middle of the steps. So therefore, my outer radius line is is there. But I'll show you what I'm talking about here in just a second. See how that? See how we just manipulated that? And I try to keep it right at the bottom of the riser and right at the top of the tread. That's where I like to keep mine. And then just sculpt it on down. Again, you're just brushing. You're just brushing. Think Bob Ross and 
happy little cloud. Just that's just what you're going to be thinking. And then get on out here again, brush strengths, brush sizes, depending on how much earth you want to move. When you're doing precision work like this, smaller is always better uh, because you need to get down in there and really start working that terrain. Um, and just a little bit at a time, just a little bit at a time. And see how I get it back out here and smooth all of this out here. Again, when I get outside, I usually will, ex uh, you know, turn my strengths up so I can move a little more earth. Um, when I'm outside away from my hardscapes and decks because I don't want to really mess with anything over there I want to keep everything um, Keep everything as, as nice and tight up on around my hardscapes and decks as I possibly can But again watch my strengths watch my sizes and I manipulate that a lot So see we're already looking great here uh, with just a little bit of smooth tool uh, once you get your elevations dropped down where you see the top of your treads and the bottom of your risers, it's all smooth tool from here uh, for this fine tuning. You know, you're just brushing, you're sculpting. That's all you're doing. You're just sculpting. So I'm going to turn this up a little bit and get to the outside. And let's see, here we go. And we're going to make this a little bit bigger because I want to move a little bit more earth on the outside here. Again, watch the edge, the outer edge. I'm not going near my hardscapes and decks. I'm keeping this right on the edge, see? And if you do see me pass over, I release control and I start at a new brush point. Again, because if you have to control Z something out, if you mess something up, you're just control Zing out whatever you just did. See how perfect this is? It's nice and sculpted, it looks beautiful. There's a little spot right here. So we're going to have to redo that. So back down to the precision elevation tool, smallest brush possible. I'm going to drop that down an inch or so. And then I'll just smooth it out a little bit more with the smooth tool. And there we go. Smooth. Let's turn my strength down. I want to move it slowly. I want to do this slowly. I don't want to do this very, I don't want to do this fast. If my strength's all the way up, it's just going to like grab that earth and just take it out. You want to do this slow, especially when you're right up on the edge like this. You just have to slow down. And take it easy. You don't want to remove more and have to go back because that just takes more time. So, you know, just just be very, very careful. And again, brush points are you know, release control to reset the brush point. And then hold control and click again to start a new brush point. If you control Z something out and you have to redo it, the basic Windows command to a control Z is control Y. So control Y will put that back. So if you control Z something too much, you can control Y and it'll put it all back. See how perfect this is? So now our, we have perfect steps, perfectly sculpted into um, the terrain on this crazy meandering path, a really curvy path all the way down. And uh, the terrain is sculpted beautifully. So that is detail sculpting around steps. And I get this a lot, especially in the group, a lot of questions on terrain. And I get it, terrain's tough. I mean, it's tricky in any program. Um, Structure Studios is very, very simple. You have all the tools and all it is, is basically you just, you're just brushing. You're just holding control brush and uh, you know, you're, you're good to go. But all of these guidelines like this here, you wanna always delete all of those out of there because when you get over into your construction markup, you don't want a ton of lines in there that you wanna see. Always delete your guidelines out. I mean, a nice clean, um, uh, nice clean uh, construction document um, or PDF or whatever it is that you're doing in Structure Studio. So always delete all of this out of there, and then we uh, will go from there. Uh, there's our guidelines. See, nice and clean, very nice and clean, and we're done. Okay, so that's like really detail, fine-tuning, getting there, doing some hardcore sculpting and detailing. Again, this is only 36 inches, so the steeper this is, the more fine-tuning and detail you're going to have to do, especially if you have a steep drop and you have stairs that are trying to get down. It's the same exact method. You're just probably going to be doing a little bit more of it. Okay, so on this one right here where it's a little more of a lazy curve, a little more of a straight line type curve, I'm going to set all this up here and... Uh, I'm going to make sure we get down past this. And I'll show you a few different ways. Now, I use all of these methods. It just, it just depends on how I'm feeling that day. Um, but I use all of these methods that I'm about to show you here. Um, so um, this one is going to be kind of cool. I'll show you some exploding and welding. Now, you're going to explode and weld on literally every single stage. House stage, construction, uh, custom shapes. Um, I use it every everywhere. 
exploding and welding. And I'll show you how, how this, this works here. So I want this one to all connect. This is not going to have any grass inlays in between the steppers. And we got solid walk path that's going to drop. So with my point and line only on my snaps, no grid. I'm going to snap it to the line. Again, this is not going to be perfect because it's an organic shape. Snap to the line. And it's like, oh no, I got a straight line. Click this one line, delete, and explode it. D shortcut key, weld it back together with a piece. It's that simple. Here it is again. Click, delete, D shortcut key for outline, click, click. Now we're perfect. So this is one way to do that. I'll do this a few more times and, and just and you can kind of grasp it. Um, I turn my grid back on uh, because I thought I was still doing my gaps, but I'm not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my grid off and just go from here. So I'm going to go click here, click again, D shortcut key. We're going to make a shape, click. I'm going to snap my points to my guidelines, click and click again, click and highlight the yellow. You'll see it yellow. That's the line you want to delete. So I kind of use the grid as a kind of a guide. Most of the time the grid is completely off. Control shift G will turn off the grid. So delete that. And D shortcut key for outline tool again, exploding and welding right back. Let's do it again. Click, highlight that one, delete, control, I'm sorry, D shortcut key for outline tool. There we go. So that's exploding and welding. You're gonna use that a lot. So familiarize yourself with that. You can delete individual lines. Um, so let's do this a few more times. We'll make a couple more of these steppers and just, to, just so you can grasp it. Again, point and line in the snaps only. Click and hold and highlight. Delete. D shortcut key for outline tool. Weld it back together. Click, highlight, yellow, delete. And D again. Let's find my line. There we go. And then click and click. There we go. So now we're starting to get our path here. Now this could be one solid line because we're still flat, relatively flat up here. So, but I'm just doing this uh, just to show you the different methods and exploding and welding, clicking these together. Now there's a faster method I'll show you. Let me speed through this one right here. Same method, same everything. Uh, explode, weld, you know. Um, but I, I use this one a lot also. So I'll come up here, click, click, D outline tool, click, D outline tool, click, D click, and then auto complete if it does. There you go. And you could use this method also. I use both, it just depends. This is pretty, this is quicker. Um, but I wanted to show you the explode and weld a method because you really are going to need to use that all throughout using this program. Um, so again, click D, click D shortcut, click D shortcut key. That's not on, so I'm going to snap it. Click. There we go. And we can adjust these. You see how this is off on my curve? We'll adjust all these. And with point and line on, you'll see how easy it is to adjust this and it hugs that line. You're not gonna have to do anything special. This, the, your uh, grab handles will hug the line. So D click, D click, auto complete. Now we're gonna get into this little break right here. So let's adjust. You see how it hugs that line? And now you can just adjust as need be. And it'll snap to your lines as long as your point and line snaps are only on. And then we can just go down here and just fine tune adjust our angles because we want our our steppers to follow the curve, you know, uh, the, the curve. Um, uh, I, I've lost the words here. The path. You want it to follow the path um, as smooth as as possible, just like this right here. See, just boom, boom, booms. Everything looks nice. Let's adjust this. And again, don't worry about it. Your point and line snaps are on. Um, you're going to hug that line all the way down. So let's fix this here. Our last one. Now we can adjust as we go. See how off that line is? I don't want that line to be there. So D shortcut key, click D shortcut key, auto complete. I'm going to adjust this. And there we go. Adjust. Yeah, there we go. Again, we're going to click D shortcut key, 
click, 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 click. There, there we go. We're going to speed this up a little bit. It's getting a little monotonous, a little redundant. But hey, that's just the way it is. You're in a 3D modeling program. You know, you're just going to have to spend the time on it if you want things to be right, and especially if you want things to be custom. So don't half-ass anything. Uh, you know, spend a few more extra minutes and stand out um, against the competition. That's just the way. That's just the way that it is. All right, so let's do this again. Click here, or click fine-tune, ding, ding, ding. There we go, there we go. All right, so watch this. This is an easy method here. Let's find our break. We'll adjust these uh, like that one. Let's, let's do this one right here. We do a little bit more terrain manipulation. This is a quicker version, but this only really works on super straight line stuff. Um, so I use both of these methods that I'm, that I'm showing you here. I use the fine-tune detail over there, and I use this method with the smear tool here. So use both methods it's not just use one or the other it's use both you see how we have more earth here since this is flat or straight line so watch this in terrain mode in terrain mode this is the smear tool now again the smear tool be very careful with the strength of the smear tool all right so watch this get the lowest point and just push 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 lowest point and then just push back Again, the strength is, I mean, like 25 or 30% on the smear tool. But look how perfect that is. Bang. Look at that. But watch when I turn on fast edit and turn off the 3D grass. I can see it. The slope is a little bit off. So I still have to come in here and fine tune with my smooth tool. You see how it slopes toward the stairs? I don't need to do that. I want to bring this whole thing up and smooth it out. So what I do is, in, in this case, is I'll come back here with my smooth tool and watch. You see how it raises? You see how it raises up to the tread in the bottom of the riser? That's where I want to be always. I want my line to be exactly right there at that 90 degree point. And so again, I'm holding control and I'm just brushing. Just a smooth, nice finished brush. But the smear tool, great tool to use. It's a fantastic tool. I use it a lot. Like I said, I use both of these methods. Um, the method before on the super curvy stairs is the one that I use the most for fine detailing. But if I need to move a lot of earth, um, I do use a smooth tool. Just be very careful with your strengths and your sizes because you only want to move the earth oh my God, on 24 inch, uh, uh, 24 inches outside of whatever the walk path or whatever it is that you're that you're working on. That's the way that I do it. It's the way that I've always done it. Um, it's the way that works best for me, and it's the most detailed and the most accurate. So as you see here, looks fantastic. I'm just going to come out here, do a little bit of a uh, little bit of fine tuning on the outside, um, and then we're off. Uh, we're off and, and running. See, uh, so I'm going to go down here. I want to get this down. Like I said, I like to keep about one inch below my uh, my tread. And you see how I got, I'm got i flattening out here. A little bit of terrain tool. You see how my edge is right on that hardscape? I don't want to move my out, outer radius edge onto that hardscape because I don't want to go in that far. Um, so, again, play with these. These are methods. You've got to find that sweet spot. But this is the way that it, this is the way that it, it works. Um, both methods, smear tool, uh, smooth tool, elevation tool, those are the three main tools that you use to get these fantastic-looking uh, steppers on a, a slope like you see here um, so it's it's relatively easy to do uh, you, it's going to take a little bit of time don't get frustrated you can do it and um, this is very simple just stick with these methods um, and remember your brush strengths and your brush sizes you want to work in small sections very small sections unless you have like a massive and you need to move like a lot of earth yeah then you can you know brush your size you know super large but um, again, for uh, slower versions of this, if you have questions, come see us on our Facebook group, VIP 3D Core Essentials on Facebook. Answer the group questions. We we'll love to have you. We've got about 1,800 members strong. We're growing. Um, a lot of this stuff will slow down and, uh, and, and really help you guys out. With a lot of advancement, users are just advancing left and right here. So it's, it's a very fun thing to do, and you'll enjoy the program a lot more and, and be a lot less frustrated. So um, again, as always, be creative, and I hope to see you in the Facebook group, VIP 3D Core Essentials. Come on and see us.